This lesson is for section 7.7. .7. We're going to be finding products of rational expressions. So our main objective for today is to multiply rational expressions. Now this skill is very closely related to finding uh, the product of a lot of fractions. So these are all rational numbers, right? Each one of these is representing a ratio, which is just a rational number. Now without a calculator, this is something that might look very difficult for us to evaluate, but it's actually pretty easy if we try to look for stuff that will cancel. So we can simplify these fractions to make them easier to deal with. Now that's the same idea that we're going to apply when we find a product of a rational expression. So here, I don't necessarily need, well I definitely don't need um, common bases when I multiply fractions, and I also can mix up the order. So 3 fourths times 8 fifths is the same as 8 fifths times 3 fourths. So multiplication is definitely commutative. Um, that means that I can also look at 3 fourths times 6 thirds before I even try to multiply by the 8 fifths. Now clearly those 3's will cancel with each other, and that 4 and 6 will simplify also. That could become a 2 down here and just a 3 up in the numerator on the 6. So now I just changed that problem and made it much easier for myself. If I continue to look for things similar to that, I can take that 8 and this 4 here and reduce that to a 1, that 8 would reduce to 2. So I just look for common factors and I factor those out. Um, now I have 2 and a 2 here, which will cancel, and I, I'm now left with 1 fifth times 3 over 1 times 2 over 1, so if you can see I'm just simplifying each of those fractions, times 3 tenths times 11 twelfths. So I continue to find things that will um, fit inside the others. Now 3 and the 12 here, that will cancel here, and that 12 reduces to 4. Then that 2 can fit inside that 4 twice, and then this fraction is completely gone. So now these two are both 1's, which I can get rid of. And I'm left with 1 fifth times 3 tenths times 11 halves. So let's erase here. So all of this simplified to a much easier product here. I'm just now going to multiply across, so I have 33 over, oops, that was a 2, not a 12. 33 over 100. Okay, so uh, the same concepts now we will apply to finding products of rational expressions. So when multiplying rational expressions, you use the same methods when multiplying numerical fractions. You don't need the same base, and you can simplify the expression to make it easier for you to compute. So we start with example number one. Now number one is an example of a rational expression. It's a polynomial over another polynomial. Uh, it's a ratio, we call it a rational expression. So here it would be really tough for us to hit multiply across. We would have to take all these terms here, distribute and multiply, um, and it would create a lot of work in both the numerator and the denominator since you're supposed to multiply across when multiplying fractions. Now instead what we're going to do is factor and cancel factors just like we did with numbers. So here in the first uh, expression, in the numerator I can factor this and write that as x plus 2 times x plus 3. Now be careful that you don't write that as like x plus 6 and x plus 1 or something else. Um, that, that's a common mistake here. For some reason the 5 and the 6 here always ends up tripping up students, so be careful with those. And then here we have x minus 5 times x plus 4 in the denominator. In the other fraction, I have uh, another factor, I'm sorry, another quadratic I can factor, which is going to be x plus 4 and x minus 1. And in the denominator here, x squared plus x minus 2 will factor into x plus 2 times x minus 1. Now right away I can start cross-canceling factors. Remember, something over here can cancel with something over here, um, just like it does in numbers. So I see an x plus 2 and an x plus 2, which I will cancel out. I also see an x minus 1 and an x minus 1 here. So I have, just treat this as one big fraction, okay? This fraction bar here can just be combined and you know, you've got everything on top divided by everything on the bottom. Now the x plus 4's will also cancel and I'm finally left with x plus 3 over x minus 5. So if, in other words, if I had simplified this and multiplied all of these, simplified all the terms and done the same thing here, um, I'd end up with a polynomial that I would need to factor and be left with x plus 3 over x minus 5. So I, I did this much easier just by cross-canceling factors as opposed to trying to multiply out the original um, uh, polynomials. Now, this is as far as you can go, okay? This does not reduce to negative three-fifths. I'll have students who want to cancel these out and call that negative three-fifths. This is an example of a rookie mistake here, a common mistake, okay, right up here. Avoid these very common mistakes. I'm sure at least once you're going to end up doing something similar, so make sure you understand that four over x plus four 
you can't just uh, cancel out those fours and call that one over x. In order to cancel something, it has to be a factor. If this was four over x times four, now those cancel. Whenever you have a sum or a difference, the exact same sum has to be in the numerator in order for you to be able to cancel that factor in the denominator, okay? So be really careful that you don't cancel like this. This is not equivalent, okay? Really rookie mistake. Okay, now x squared plus four over x also doesn't just turn into x plus four. This x would have to divide both of these parts. So if this was x squared plus four x over x, then I can factor out an x and cancel out that x in the denominator. But here, of course, I can't because that original expression does not have a four x, it's just a four. So please don't just cancel um, you know, one of those and call that x plus four. These, again, are very rookie mistakes that you would want to avoid. So our final answer here for number one is just x plus three over x minus five. So let me erase here. This, again, is our final answer. So let's try number two. Um, in number two, we're gonna factor the numerator here, and we have x plus four times x plus three over 12 times four over x plus four. Right away, I see these x plus fours here can cancel. And then I have uh, four over 12 times the x plus three in the numerator. Now, I'm not sure why, but sometimes I will have students who leave this un, um, unsimplified. And I think it's because they're afraid to try to cancel things after we talk about you know, this. But here you gotta recognize that this is not a sum. If it was four plus x plus three, then you wouldn't be able to cancel that 12 in the denominator. Um, but because this is a factor, four times x plus three, we can simplify that and call that x plus three over three. And again, don't reduce that and call that something like, I don't know, I've seen x plus one. Sometimes I just see this reduced to just x. This is not equivalent to that. It's also not equivalent to x plus one. Um, I'm trying to think of other crazy things that I see, but those are kind of some of the more popular common mistakes, but this is as simplified here as this uh, original product here gets, okay? Okay, in question three here, we have a difference of squares. Now, for this difference of squares, that'll factor in x plus two and x minus two. In the denominator, we can factor out a GCF here. So always look to see if you have a GCF as well, so you could factor out a two and call that x minus two. Then I have the two in the numerator in the second uh, fraction, and I have x plus two in the denominator. Now here I can clearly cross off the x plus twos, those will cancel. I will also be able to cancel the x minus twos, and the two here, and this two here will also cancel. This product is not zero, it's one. So make sure that you write that product here as one, don't just say it's zero, okay? It's like having three over three, this does not reduce to zero, it's equal to one. Okay, last up, we're asked to simplify x minus six over six minus x. Now this is a technique that we're gonna use often in future problems, so you definitely wanna make sure that this technique here makes sense. Because at first, this looks like this is not something we can simplify any further. We have a uh, factor x minus six, and it's not the exact same as the factor below it. However, these differ just slightly. Um, six minus x is the same as the opposite of negative six plus x. So in other words, if I factor out a negative, I'd be left with negative six plus x, okay? So really, this negative six plus x is the same, if I just rewrite the order here, I can write that as x minus six. See how my x is positive, my six is negative, so this is equivalent. So now I have x minus six over negative x minus six. So these will cancel leaving me with negative one. So if I want to write this here as negative one, those are equivalent. So real quick, I'll do one more example here. Let's say I had seven minus x over x minus seven. This is something where I recognize them to be very similar to one another. I would want to factor out from the numerator here a negative one. If I factor out a negative one, I have negative seven plus x, okay, and I can then rewrite that as negative one times x minus seven. And now those two factors would cancel and the product here or the quotient would be negative one. All right, so this is a technique, like I said, that you'll wanna use often um, in future problems, so make sure you're comfortable with it. That's the end of the lesson, it's a short one, so I'll see you guys in class and uh, get ready to do some work. Nice job, see you tomorrow.